Disclaimer, this video contains music and video footage that I do not own. A list of credits can be found at the end of the video. This video is not intended for children under the age of 13, nor is my channel. The Child Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA, states that nobody under the age of 13 should have, among other things, a YouTube account. Hello boyos, girlos, and non-binary gender lows. Christmas was just a week away at the time of writing this, and is getting recorded the week and a half afterwards, and will probably arrive even later than that. And what better way to celebrate the winter holidays than with a new video from your least favorite lost media commentator? I've hobbled together a short video for you guys befitting of the season, so here are five pieces of lost Christmas media. And there's no updates this time, so let's just get right into it. Can you believe it guys? Christmas! Just a week away! Christmas is in a week! The Nightmare Before Christmas is a 1993 stop-motion classic from the likes of Tim Burton and Henry Selleck that changed Hot Topic forever. I hear tons of people debating whether this is a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie, and I say it's a Thanksgiving movie. Jokes aside, Vincent Price, a very prolific actor known for his horror movies, is actually slated to play Santa in the film. However, after the death of his wife, Coral Brown, in 1991, his health began to decline, and with that, his voice became frail and weak, before the recordings were scrapped and he was recast in favor of Ed Ivory, whose performance made it into the final film. Selleck was saddened by this, but after Price's death in 1993, there's no way that this would ever come to fruition. It's unknown whether Selleck or Disney have the recordings, but I wouldn't count on it. Can you believe it guys? Christmas! Just a week away! Christmas is in a week! Billy Corgan is a musician best known for being the lead singer of American alt-rock band The Smashing Pumpkins. In between albums with them, he has a solo career, and amongst many other ventures, there was a Christmas album that he worked on through 2018 that I never ended up releasing. Following the release of The Smashing Pumpkins reunion album Shiny No So Bright Volume 1 slash LP No Fast No Future No Sun, Corgan announced during an interview on USA Today that he wanted to re-record Christmas songs originally recorded by The Pumpkins on other albums, such as Christmas Time from A Very Special Christmas 3, and a cover of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on No toys for OJ. He would have done it leaning more on the acoustic end, though the idea was mocked by those who heard it due to Corgan's gothic vocals and the melancholic sound of the pumpkins as a whole, being in high contrast to the thought of Christmas music. Nothing was heard from the album until 2020, where he was interviewed by journalist Jennifer Weigel about it. Corgan originally wanted to make the project a Smashing Pumpkins project instead of a Billy Corgan one. In the end, however, he worked on it solo, with him writing a few songs, finding some obscure cool ones, and a few classics he liked. Corgan didn't like the outcome, as it felt rushed and unsatisfying, so the album was scrapped and never seen again. Can you believe it guys? Christmas! Just a week away! Christmas is in a week! A Tin Toy Christmas was the name given to Pixar's cancelled first feature film. It was going to be made as proof that Pixar could make feature length films, however it was cancelled and eventually succeeded by Toy Story which blasted the company to the mainstream it comfortably sits in today. The film was a sequel to their short film Tin Toy, though the reason it wasn't made was because Disney gave the folks at Pixar a chance to make Toy Story, which they figured they would make instead. And that series is a whole other can of lost worms. The plot went something like this. Tinny was a part of a Christmas Tin Toy line sold in the 1940s, but due to poor sales, he and his friends are put away in storage and Tinny falls into a long sleep. After many years of slumber, Tinny awakes up in a modern-day megastore during the Christmas season. He sees that his friends are nowhere to be found, so he decides to look for them on Christmas Eve. On his adventure, he meets a rather sarcastic ventriloquist dummy who's looking for an owner. During the early 1990s, Pixar was in steep financial troubles due to making films with their computers and trying and failing to make sales with the computers themselves. They dropped being a software company from their plate, which helped finances. During this time, they made commercials and would begin work on a half-hour special, A Tin Toy Christmas, and afterwards would begin working on Toy Story. However, say hello to former Walt Disney Studios president Peter Schneider, who tried to hire Pixar animator John Lasseter for Disney, though Lasseter declined, as he was going to try and help Pixar out of their financial troubles first. Schneider then called Pixar vice president Ed Catmull, who was asked if Disney could get them to make a feature film. Catmull insisted they do a 30 minute special first, but Schneider reassured them that if they could make a 30 minute film, that they could make a 90 minute one. Toy Story was then put into production, and a tin toy Christmas was permanently shelved. Can you believe it guys? Christmas! Just a week away! Christmas is in a week! If there is one group of people who are infamous in the lost media scene, it's the Wiggles. Maybe I'll give them their own whole video one day, but we'd have to see about it. For those of you who don't have a childhood, the Wiggles are an Australian music group formed in 1991 focusing on songs for children. During the celebration tour used to promote the album and video Surfer Jeff, there was a change in set list and tour name into Christmas Celebration Tour. The tour is notable for being the last tour to feature the original Wiggles lineup being Anthony Field, Blue, Murray Cook, Red, Jeff Fratt, Purple, and Greg Page, yellow. The tour followed most of the commonly toured Australian venues that they had been touring for the last 15 years, with the last two shows being performed at the Sydney Entertainment Centre on December 22nd and 23rd, 2012. The performance is notable for being the first time since 2009 that they had performed there, but also the last time they were able to perform there as the building was closed in 2015 before being demolished the following year. The milestones don't end there, however, as the show would debut the next generation of Wiggles, being Simon Price, who replaced Murray, Lachlan Gillespie, who replaced Jeff, and Emma Watkins, who replaced Greg. The tour was one of the few to not feature Hot Potato and was the 
the last time ooh it's captain feather sword getting strong and the wiggles 2012 medley were performed live and the 23rd marked the only time wiggling around the world was performed live in the wiggles' history the performance has no official footage of it online from the band even though some was recorded as cited during greg's q a series greg remembers or tries to various clips and photos from the audience at network 10 news being available online though the footage of the concert is scarce to say the least can you believe it guys christmas just a week away Christmas is in a week! Christmas Time with Mr. Rogers was a 1977 TV special based on the children's TV program Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and was one of a small number of Mr. Rogers' projects made during the show's hiatus from 1976 to 1979. The special, despite its name, didn't just focus on Christmas traditions, but also Hanukkah and consideration having been given to people who celebrate neither holiday. The special begins with Mr. Rogers walking home and greeting his neighbors before receiving a package from Mr. McFeely, which contains a new pair of sneakers and a card from the McFeelys. Mr. Rogers then talks to the audience about how he wants to give the audience hope this holiday season, and how this special is his gift to the audience. Three carolers then sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas from outside his window before Mrs. McFeely calls Mr. Rogers, telling him that Mr. McFeely is on his way for the rehearsal of an annual get-together. At the rehearsal, Mr. Rogers meets Stephanie, a girl whose family wouldn't be able to make it due to car trouble, which disappoints both of them. Meanwhile, Officer Clemens details a dream in which his traveling choir has their bus break down before they lose their voices. The group is helped out by the mystical music man, a magical musician who sang Rise Up, Shepherd and Follow, whilst Clemens fixed the bus before providing them with the ability to perform without instruments as Clemens sings Silent Night. Mr. Rogers returns home with Stephanie, who shows disdain for having to wait for something you aren't looking forward to. Mrs. Hamilton arrives trying to borrow some eggs. Mr. Rogers doesn't have enough, so she goes somewhere else to get some before Stephanie makes a story about the music man helping her find her eggs. Meanwhile, Mr. Rogers opens a box from her friend, which is a banner for the neighborhood trolley, with one side reading Merry Christmas and the other reading Happy Hanukkah. He then takes out a dreidel, telling the audience about Hanukkah before singing I Have a Little Dreidel. Meanwhile, on the land of make-believe, Lady Elaine literally turns the town upside down after learning she only got one present with the exception of the music man, who uses his magic stick to hold himself upright. He gives her an ice skating experience before King Friday gives the word to open gifts, being Sloppery Doza Fanun de Puck. And Lady Elaine figures out that her one gift was a decoration all of her neighbors had a part in making. Back to Mr. Rogers, he explains many holiday traditions before saying that all presents are given out of love, regardless of what is celebrated. Stephanie then makes up another story about the music man where he helps recover a lost boy by climbing to the highest point nearby before singing My Sheep Were Grazing with the boy's sister and father, which allows him to find his way home by following their voices. The special ends with the get-together, where Stephanie is surprised by Stanley Clay arriving with her family, before she dances on stage to the audience singing The Friendly Beasts, and Mr. Rogers wishing the audience good memories and a happy holiday. The special initially broadcast on December 20th, 1977, before allegedly being re-aired every Christmas day until 1982, though for some unknown reason the special hasn't re-aired since then with no home recordings known to exist. The only lead the community has is from the Mr. Rogers fan site known as the Neighborhood Archive, who owns a copy of the special in full, providing screenshots and a very detailed synopsis, though they haven't released it due to copyright concerns. Though, maybe it'll show up someday. Thanks for watching this video, and sorry that I'm late with it. Do you have any pieces of Lost Media you'd like to see me talk about? Let me know. Anyway, I gotta deal with endless Christmas music on the radio, so I'll see you next time. Goodbye.